Welcome back. We'll uh, continue with our um, development of the matrix vector weak form for the linear elliptic uh, PDE with scalar variables in uh, three dimensions. So uh, what we are going to do today is essentially uh, uh, not only complete assembling the matrix vector weak, the matrix vector weak form, but also talk a little bit about uh, associated issues which arise mainly from the fact that we are looking at problems here in 3D. So, uh, so the topic of this segment and the next couple at least is uh, the matrix vector weak form. Recall that we, uh, at the end of the last segment, we were working with um, the local element uh, level integrals. Okay? And we had uh, developed, again, uh, the local element level matrix vector representations of these integrals. In particular, we worked with the left-hand side integral, uh, with the, the bilinear term. We worked with uh, the forcing function from the right-hand side. And now that brings us to the to the integral that imposes the Neumann boundary condition. Okay, so let's start with this one, that one. So uh, what we're doing now is to consider the integral, um, integral over partial of omega e sub j of uh, minus W H J N D S. All right. And uh, it's useful right away to uh, uh, recall for ourselves the sort of um, term we're working with here, right? So uh, the situation we have is the following. We have um, our basis, we have our domain, and we're looking here at an element that uh, has an uh, edge, or in this case a face really, that coincides with um, uh, that that coincides with an uh, with a face of the of the body of the body of interest itself, right? So we have an element of that type, okay? And the whole point is that uh, in this case, so, so this is omega e, okay? And we may think of that face as being partial of omega e sub j, okay? And we recall that uh, partial of omega e sub j is uh, the intersection of the boundary of that element omega e with the Neumann boundary of the problem. Okay, so that's really the face of the element upon which we're imposing the Neumann boundary condition. All right, um, using our um, finite dimensional basis functions, it takes on the following form. It is now minus um, integral over that of, uh, okay, of sum of N A C A E J N D S. Now, one thing we've got to be careful about here is uh, that uh, we can indeed consider the sum to be a sum running over the entire uh, set of uh, element nodes, right? And and let's start out with writing it that, in that fashion. Okay. But now we recognize that uh, in this picture that we've drawn here, 
not all the nodes um, have corresponding to themselves shape fun uh, basis functions that are non-zero on the surface of interest, right? On the interface of interest. If we say, for instance, that this is the interface of interest that we've that we've indicated, then let me highlight in a different color the nodes that lie on that uh, boundary. Let's suppose that those are the four nodes lying on that boundary. Okay. Uh, it should be pretty clear to us that it is only the basis functions that are one at those nodes that will contribute at all to this integral. Okay. So having made that observation, there are uh, Uh, th th there are at least a couple of ways in which we can proceed, and this, the, 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 the different ways of proceeding simply correspond to different ways of doing bookkeeping here. Okay? Uh, for one thing, one may say that um, uh, one may define, okay? One may define a uh, subset, right? Uh, one may define a subset of uh, nodes uh, A, right? which A sub N, shall we say, okay, which consists of uh, all nodes A such that X A E, right, which is the corresponding nodal point, yeah, right, using the local uh, node numbering, such that X A E belongs to partial of omega E sub J, okay, right? And then what one can do is simply restrict that sum to A lying in this set, okay? Uh, in, in this case, I've used the subscript N to suggest that this is the set of uh, nodes or degrees of freedom uh, corresponding to the Neumann boundary data. Okay, so let's use this approach, right? So what we see then is that uh, minus integral over this surface W H J N D S equals. Now again, I'll take several steps uh, together, right? I'll do this. I'll pull our summation out and I'll just say A belongs to the set we introduced, right? Script A sub N, okay? We have here C, A, E, and I apologize that C looks too much like an E. C, A, E, integral over, uh, over partial of uh, omega E, sub j um, n a j n d s okay um, now we uh, make another note which is that uh, we can of course convert from here to our parent subdomain right uh, the parent domain from which we construct every single element okay so uh, in that setting, let's suppose that we are still talking of the same element here. And um, so let me go to the next slide to get this done. Now, um, we are going to elucidate a manner in which to carry out this integral, right? So for that purpose, let's uh, suppose that we are now working with an element, right? Some general element. And on this element, let's suppose that um, the surface of interest to us is this one, right? Let's suppose that this one is uh, the surface partial of omega E sub J, okay? 
Now this uh, element of course is always constructed from the same parent domain, right, a nice regular element in this bi-unit domain. Okay, right, we have that sort of a mapping. All right, so let, let's suppose, uh, just for the purpose of argument, that, uh, the, uh, that the phase partial of omega, omega E sub J is, is the mapping of that phase. Okay, and the way I've uh, drawn things out, the phase of interest here, uh, which I will mark just for the purpose of argument again, I'm going to mark this as partial of omega C sub J, okay? It is the phase in the bi-unit domain, in the parent subdomain, that gets mapped on to the phase of interest to us, which is the phase on which we're imposing the Neumann boundary condition, okay? Uh, essentially, all we need to do here is uh, now recognize that um, if we construct a sort of a lower dimensional mapping, right, which is the, the mapping that um, converts the area of uh, this particular phase, right, the one marked as partial of omega E sub J, okay, which, which obtains the, the, this particular phase from omega C sub J, okay. What we observe here is that the integral that we need to carry out, okay, which is, um, uh, coming from the previous uh, slide, uh, it is minus sum A belongs to A sub J, C A E integral over omega E sub J N A J N. Ds, right? Let's observe that this thing can essentially be constructed as uh, integral over partial of omega C sub J N A J N right? And what we will do here is uh, write determinant of, um, let me just write this as J sub S D S um, C, okay? Where what I'm talking about here is the idea that uh, for the mapping of the uh, the faces, we can uh, we actually need to worry just about we, we need to worry only about how to map from this phase partial of omega c sub j to omega to partial of omega e sub j, okay, and uh, j s is that mapping, okay, so j s the tensor j s uh, is um, what we may define as the area coordinates, right, that correspond to a, uh, that correspond to a, to a new set of variables, maybe x tilde 1, comma, c2, x tilde 1, comma, c3, x tilde 2 comma c2, x tilde 2 comma c3, okay? And what we mean by this is the following. If uh, what we're referring to here is the following. If we look at the surface that we are working on, 
in our physical domain, it is this one. Okay, so this is the surface partial of omega E sub J. Okay, what I'm suggesting is that we can now define local coordinates on this surface, right? And these local coordinates are what I'm referring to as X tilde 1, X tilde 2. Okay, all right? And they, these ones are obtained from a mapping of uh, that face in the parent subdomain, which is C2, C3, okay? And this is easy enough to do because in terms of C2, sorry, in terms of C2 and C3, we can indeed express the local coordinates x tilde 1, x tilde 2, okay? Okay, what we need to do here is define uh, the map x tilde as a function of C2 and C3, all right? Okay, and then the determinant that we're talking of is simply the determinant of this particular mapping. Right? The detail of how to construct this can sometimes seem challenging, especially if the surface uh, partial of omega E, as I've tried to represent here or here, is not a plane surface. Okay? That takes a little more work, but it can essentially be done. Often, they will indeed be plane surfaces, and then the, 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 this mapping is, is straightforward. In particular, if partial of omega E sub J is a coordinate surface, the mapping is actually very, is, is, is almost trivial, okay? Um, so this is how you would, uh, we would go about doing it, right? So.